Hello, my name is Anthony Gray. Um, this is a special edition of uh, Grayscale. I'm doing this for a horror movie site. I had did the painting of uh, Christopher Lee as Count Dracula, and I didn't know I was supposed to do a video with it. My bad. So this is the first time I've actually done two of the same paintings in the same day. All right, but we're gonna get right on to it. Like I said, my bad. As you can see, I do have a sketch of Chris on the bo on the uh, board. It's actually this this time I'm using watercolor paper instead of the uh, palette. Um, it's just another remake re rendition of this fellow here. Okay. All right. So I have a reference photo on my tablet right there. Alright, so, with that being said, what you also see is masking tape, 2 inch masking tape around the initial sketch, the hair, line, jaw, face line, and his cowl. Okay, I even got tape around the, most of the inside of this, the face. His eyes will be masked. His uh, inside of his mouth and fangs are also masked. All right, and I'm gonna cut those out right now. The reason is because I'm going to the way I'm gonna paint it and approach this is with some uh, layering, uh, a glazing of color for this guy. Okay. Gently going to pull. It's a lift pull. Since I'm working on paper, I don't have to really cut too deep. Okay. And I don't want to take up some of the pencil marks, the shading areas, and everything uh, with it. And a lot of what I'm doing, I'll probably end up speeding up anyway. on occasions you will hear my dog bark then again if I speed up the tape you're not going to hear most of that anyway to his mouth in the event that you end up double taping something you're just gonna have to press a little bit harder the more you do stuff like this the more you'll get accustomed to the feel of the paper and the tape and how hard to press and not to press so don't worry about all of that I'm going to go around the hairline and the cowl. I don't have to necessarily go around the hairline exactly perfect because his hair is black and so I can accentuate all of that later on in the painting. So I, I can add the extra hairlines and do it up whatever way I want. So I'll, I'll pretend to be Mr. Hairdresser a little bit later.
But right now, the most important part is just outlining the figure, the bust, the head, however you want to call it. And just getting right around the edges here. Just like so. I want it pressed down enough to where, depending on what type of background I'm going to put them in, I don't want a lot of the uh, paint to seep through. The more liquid the acrylic, the paint, the more it's liable to seep through. But if it seeps through, his hair is mostly black anyway, so it's not going to matter. That's basically what I want so far. Because I'll be working on the background first. The previous background was pretty dark. And I had like with a uh, semblance of red blood dripping down there and what have you. Okay, so I'll pretty much stick with that, alright? There's planes of the face that I'm more than likely going to always be in the light, which is part of the forehead, okay, bridge of the nose, tip of the nose, and maybe the chin, all right, and probably the, the upmost part of the upper lip and most of the lower lip. The upper lip is usually darker than the lower lip. Okay, obviously your eyes are in sockets, so the sockets are kind of deep and shaded in. With such a sinister character, you could actually accentuate that even more. Okay, now if you can basically get that type of shading down in your head, um, it's almost like how caricature artists do the same thing. This basic shading for basic vantage point of the head. The shading is always the same, no matter what shape of the head and what shape of the face, the, the shading will still be the same. Whether they're extremely thin or they're overweight, um, if they're muscular, it doesn't matter. Child, baby, adolescent, teenager, it doesn't matter. The shading, all the skulls are similar. Okay. You know, the two eye sockets, the nose, the mouth, all human beings have them. All right. And the head shapes are usually pretty much have the same dimensions and proportions okay that's all sorry about that let's put it right here and let's zoom in a little okay maybe around here keep it thin thick it just trail maybe have a thin one off to the side have it go on all right I'm gonna wet it a little bit more I want kind of a thin line try to flatten an edge here and maybe have one just dangling around out, out down like this something like that and just have it come on down have one coming to the side oh you guys can't see it I'll do another one Okay. I'll go right 
right back here to the top again. I mean, you pretty much know how blood streaks kind of work. Everything kind of gravitates downward. Maybe one over up around here. Maybe a couple drips here. Maybe a thick one there. It goes off. Maybe meets that guy down there. Comes on down. Something like that. Okay. Just rinsing the brush off. I'm going to go to a smaller. I'll get this one. I got to find a script liner. I'm just twirling it around in the mix. Okay. Something like that. Have it just trail. I like the variation in line I can get. Something like that. Dipping more water into the deep red and white mix. Kind of want it to be really uh, soupy type of consistency so it flows off the brush. But I don't want it too dark because once it dries, it settles in, you know. Something like that. I'm going to get a little more white. Now I'm going to use some white to accent some of this, uh, some of the blood here. All right. Put one here. Yeah, have some coming down, straight down. A little thick glob right there. If it gets a little too dark, I'll just dip a little more into a deep red. Have it come down right off of his hairline. Have some come down here. I'm twirling the brush also as I do this. Gives different variations, you know. Okay, I'm going to use some of this mixing white. And I'm going to highlight just little bits and pieces of blood just in certain areas not all of it just the light catch it in certain spots like I say it's starting to dry so it's starting to really settle in settle into the black okay and actually that's fine I also have the light source going at a different, at uh, the same left side here. So it's, it's highlighting off the same, same uh, light source. But like I said, I'm not going to do too many of them. Just trailing down bits and pieces here and there. Maybe at one here. Like I said, I'm not doing all of them. Don't have to. <coughs> Alright. Now that that's done, you can see what I did going down. Okay. So let's bring it down this way. Let's work with uh, his cowl. Now his cowl, on the first one, I did it a weird type of gray purple uh, sort of color all right now I do have obviously the cowl mask here in here but I want his face pretty much to keep uh, keep it surrounded within the tape all right the thing about masking tape is that you can see straight through the pencil lines straight through the tape. Now some of it is double taped so I have to press a little harder. Like I said, once you get accustomed to the feel of the tape, um, you won't be so intimidated as to how far you should um, cut. And I'm doing a, a pull lift method. That way you don't rip up the paper also I'm using a 120 uh, pound watercolor paper uh, this is a uh, 11 by 15 watercolor paper 
which is what I typically use for my tutorials because I do quite a few t tutorials and uh, it's a lot less expensive than getting an actual canvas itself. Where I have, have it double taped, it's a little tough to get it on the first try. Alright. I also have the paper taped on the back as well as on the edges. So it's got tape in the in the back of this also. Now that I've taken off where the cowl would be, alright. I will work on painting this little cowl area. On the picture it's obviously it's pitch black. We'll add a little life to it. Okay. So with the dark mix I do have, alright, I'ma add really some um I'm gonna add some purple to this dark mix. So it'll be a purplish black. And I'm gonna use maybe a tad bit of this sky blue into the purple. I'll have to mix enough of it. And I'll mix them both in black with, a, with a, just a touch of black. Matter of fact, let's bring okay. it down. Anyway, here's a mix. A little purple, sky blue. Alright. I'll mix a little bit of this so I get a mix that I want. Something like that. I'm going to add a slight touch of black. Can you see that? The slightest touch of black there. Add it right in there. Kind of graze it a little bit. But I want something of that hue. Put a little purple in there. Don't know if I want it darker than that. Maybe I do. Just a little bit. Something like that. Now it may appear black to you, but it's not. Because remember you got a solid black background. Okay. I'm gonna dip this into a little bit of water just to loosen up the paint. And we're gonna go right back up to the canvas here. Right up to the cowl. Alright. Now I got the black, it's going to be near his jawline, but I have the rest of the color, um, the same color as you see here. And I'm going to go all the way around his chin, just like that. And I'm going to go back all the way around. Okay. And I'm going to do it one more time. I want to kind of deep. Right around his chin here, it kind of disappears on one side, like so. I can also have it black around here, sort of around the edge, but I want a deeper black coming up here. Go right out around. Just have it disappear, like so. You should be able to tell, okay? Now you got, he's got a shadow there, all right? Let's work on that cowl. I'm going to use some mixing white. Mixing white is a just transparent white. It's not it's not opaque at all actually. Okay. I'm going to use a little bit. I did not wipe my brush down at all. I'm going to use a little bit of this white. And I'm going to figure out where the shadow for his cowl. Something like that. Just taking my finger and I'm just wiping away the hard edge. I only want one hard edge. Okay. Actually this is a liquid 
the, the transparent white. All right. Something like that. <coughs> I'm going to get a little more of the transparent white. And I'm going to lightly, like you would do a mountain, come around the side like that. I'll just take my finger and wear some of that away. I want it to go in a certain direction. Just like that. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Where I would figure the cow will be lit. Get rid of that hard edge. Something like that. Come on, right on around. As you can see, the white will take on the color of whatever's underneath. Follow? Now, to make this stand out, whoops, make it stand out a little bit more, I'm going to take the black. Actually, I'm going to do. Hold on. I'm going to clean off this brush, I'm not going to use it as of yet. Let me get a little black. Let me see here. I'm going to just dip into the black. Okay, it's like a, a little stencil brush. I'm going to go from the corner. Okay, right from the corner, only the corner. Like so. I'm going to do the same thing here, only from the corner. I'm going to take what I have on my brush. I'm going to wipe it right off. I'm going to use what's left and I'm going to just in a circular motion just shade it in from the corner going up into his cowl. I'm picking up a little bit of color from where it's heaviest. I'm making the circle a little wider but I don't want to press as hard. But I do want the corners to be pretty dark. I'm going to do the same exact thing on the other side. Circular motion. It's getting lighter as you go up the cowl. And you can always go over this and go over this as many times as you want to get the uh, achieved look that you're looking for. Alright, I'm just going to tap a little bit of color. I want to darken just up the, right here in the center a little bit. Just right in here. Maybe a little more by its chin, but I'm wipe off the rest of the paint. Off the brush. Don't have to wash it. And circular motion. And remember, you don't have to go as heavy here in the center. All depends on how you want to uh, you want it done how you want to um, shade it is his front cowl I just don't want his front cowl to be totally uh, black and I really don't want it to blend all the way into the background don't, doesn't have to be okay so I'm actually starting to blend right from the tape and going outward or inward, however you want to perceive it. That's about it, like so. Alright, and that will be the Count's Cowl. Let's rinse this off. I may use this brush, may get back to it, I may not. All depends. All right, let us move on. I might, as I'm looking at it, let's put a little highlight. I'm gonna use this flat brush here. I wanna put a little bit of a highlight I'm dipping into um, into the uh, zinc white. 
with a little bit of the color, um, the cowl color. I want to give a little, just a little edge, and maybe it comes in here, but it goes underneath its chin. So I'm angling it, and it's going to disappear underneath that chin there. Something like that. Something like that. Okay. I kind of like that. Alrighty. That's enough of that playing around. A little bit back here. It just disappears. Like so. Alright. <clears throat> Most likely that'll be all I'll do for its cowl. Okie dokie. Let's move on. That's what he looks like without the tape. I'll zoom in close for a second. Alright, you see where the cheekbones are? It's mainly it's pretty dark around his mouth, his mouth area here. Alright, don't worry about that little flub right there. That'll be taken care of. I wouldn't worry about that part at all. Okay, it's going to be pretty dark from this part here all in front but pretty much almost washed out up in front and on the side of his jaw and on the side here the light is actually facing right right at his right at his face but from from up above okay but that's the way it appears in the picture okay um I'm gonna do first a main base color for his face uh it is gonna be like a sickly pinkish green brownish green pink type of weird deathly kind of um, look I'm gonna give to him all right I'm gonna use for this all right definitely a little bit of olive before I even do that I'm gonna spray I'm gonna spray him spray his face and here we go Why did I spray his face? Well, for one, as the paint is maneuvered around his face, it actually spreads. Okay, it evens itself out. Now, in case you get a drip and a leak like that, don't panic. Don't scream and run around the house and all of that. Just draw it back so you can see what I'm talking about. There's a little, little watery drip going on. Take a towel, wipe it up. That'll be the end of that. Don't worry about it. Don't panic. All right. Anyway, and you can also work on the shading of what you want dark, and what you don't want dark. Okay. And I'm gonna show you how to go about that. Remember, all in here by the eye, the eye socket. Pretty dark. All right. It is a socket, right? Do the same thing with the other eye. Pat it around there a little bit, like so. And I'm actually running out of paint, so I'm gonna mix a little bit more. A bit of the green, some more of this white, some more white, some more of the green, and some more water. Loosen it up a bit. I'm going, uh, Toward the dark parts of his face anyway, so all up in here, all up in here, down in here. Now as you can see I'm not the most careful about it because it will not matter. It will be shaded anyway. It 
smoothed over. Plus, if I sprayed it again, it'll just loosen up and you can maneuver it any which way you want anyway. Some of this will be even darker than this brown that I have on. Okay. Rinse off the brush a little bit. Like I say, if some of that makes you nervous, yeah, just wipe some of it away. You don't have to have the edges so hard. If that, you know, makes you a little self-conscious. I particularly don't care. It'll be glazed over anyway. And smoothed over. Like that. Okay. Let's dip some more. I need to go just under his nose a little. Like so. Uh, let's make his eyes a little deeper. You gotta remember, you got black eyebrows, all that fun stuff happening under there. Okay. Now, some of this, like I said, is gonna be even darker. So, don't fret. Okay, dokie. Some of you are wondering what on earth is he doing? Don't worry, it all makes sense after a while. I also have a bad habit of crumpling my perfectly almost non-used tissue into a perfect ball the size of a dime. You'll get accustomed to it. Alright. Now the light source is a little different, a little little batty, alright? Because it's so deep around in the front and by his nose. All right. Usually it's darker on the side, but it's not going to be this time because it's actually deeper around this part here. Um, a lot of light shining on this side. It's all underneath his mouth. All right. It kind of accentuates his teeth. You got me? All righty. I want him a little greener than that. So I'm going to dip into the water. Dip into my olive green, so it's going to be a, just a slight glaze. Because remember, olive green's got brown in it. I do want them a little, a little greener than that. All right, so here we go. Just using the green, dipping it into the water. So, you know, we're working on watercolor paper, so the, the color's sinking into the paper anyway. All right. So not only is it setting, but it's also drying, and it's drying into the, to the paper. Okay. Just like so. Good enough. All right. Just like that. It, paper, it, the streaks are spread, you'll be all right. Okay, remember the stuff spreads out, opens. All right. Plus, I'm using uh, watercolor paper. All right. And glaze is nothing but um, it's like you're using watercolor, but it's acrylic paint, and it doesn't move once it dries. So you can just layer on top of layer on top of layer on top of layer on top of layer. You know that type of deal. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take like nothing for you, but I'm gonna, I'm actually going to let this dry a little bit, um, and I'll get right back and we'll continue on. <clears throat> Alright, we're going to have a little fun. We're going to go into some one stroke shading. I'm going to mix a lot of the flesh tone for this guy, okay, which is the olive green, bright red, or brilliant red they call it and some white okay a little more olive green there all right I mix plenty 
hopefully plenty. And I'm going to take the tip of my brush and just dip the tip of it in black. So it looks like this. You should be able to see that. My little tray here in a back and forth motion. Because you want a smooth blend between the two colors. The darker edge is going to go around the eye sockets and the lighter brownish greenness mix will go on the outside. But it's in a socket type motion so it'll look something like that and around underneath the eye. Give a very sinister look to him. Okay. I'm just turning the brush around. Just a little one stroke deal like so. Okay. And I'm going to use the same medium, same thing. Around almost like the, the circular part of his nose. And it's going to come from there around the line and just disappear in there. Now I need some more obviously of the brown mix. I'm just getting a little more of the brown mix. I'm going to go back over that black a little bit with the brown. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Of his nose. Bring it on down. And bring it on around here. Get some more of the brown. Brownish green. Circle some of that up around it underneath his nose a little bit. Get some of the black around there like so. Take my little blender thingy. Circular motion. Soften it a little bit. It will bring out his nose. Let me dip a little bit in the water here. Loosen it up. Did not dip any more paint into the brush or anything. I'm going to go just. Uh, let's darken up this here. De definitely darken up underneath his lip here. This is where the, the shadow of his lip will be. And right around the line of his lip. Remember, it's covered in tape. Okay. Uh, just maybe a hint of it up here, not too much. And down here around his chin, just like that, and go right down the side like so. Can you guys see kind of how he's fleshing out already? All right. Now I'm going to take a darker version, just the tiniest tip of black into my mix, Change the, ch just change the shade a little bit, a little darker, and go around the bridge of his nose, around here, and a little bit more up around here, around the bridge of his nose secondary shadow around here and maybe one right around here on the side and under here a little curve this is going to be solid black up in here where his eyebrows are going to be typically all in the side is where all the shading would be but not here not not for this guy because the light is hitting from a different spot Okay. Like so. As I'm looking at the picture itself, and most of this is now glazing, I can put the two matches together. Like so.
Okay. Now, I'm going to keep that as is because I'm going to use the fine liner to add the wrinkles and stuff to his eyes. All right. I put my fine liner up. Yes, I did. There you are. Okay. The little eye wrinkles. Need this movie. So he's got all those nice little character wrinkles, whatever you want to call it. I call it age. But it made it really made it look effective. Now to do it and make it look convincing, remember it's still a socket. So you still make these things go in the socket like in a socket like uh, fashion. All around here. You see those arrows, guys? And ladies, there's arrows all through his hair. Alright, let's pull back. Yeah. Alright. Those arrows are telling me his hair pattern and which direction I should go with them. Now, he does have streaked salt and pepper ish type hair. But I'm going to work on that hairline of his. I'm taking a brush that does not have. Well, it does not leave paint over it. I'm gonna water it down a little bit. It would be it would be good to get a brush that has kind of a staggered. Um, now see, this is too fine. I would need something a little more beat up than this. But I'm gonna go in the direction of his hair line. Now this brush. It's way too fine. Go straight there. I'm gonna need the other brush. Let me use the other brush. I don't like this one. I wanted to show you an example of how to get a more natural hairline. This brush is way too quote unquote good of condition. So let me get something a little raggedy. Yeah, this one has a little character to it. Let's use this one. I'm going to go on that, that edge again. Alright. And you'll see. See that? See that little ragged edge there? That's what I'm talking about. I'm going to take that little ragged edge. I'm going to go all around his hairline with that. I like that. And if you want, you can still follow the pattern of his hair. But I like... So, let's give him more of a widow's peak here. But, I like the staggered look that the brush gives you. I'm going to lay the brush a little flatter. Come right down. His hair is going this way anyway. Like that. I'm going to just keep using this brush. It's not a full three quarters view, but it's pretty close. He's not directly looking directly at you. His hair, his, he, his head is turned a little more to our, it would be our left. Okay, but it would be to your right if you're looking at this. I believe it's your right. I think this uh, thing flips it. Okay. Alright, let's go into the black a little bit. I got the black down here. This. Black it in that ear shadow. He got one here. He's got one on the side down here. I gotta be pretty smooth when it goes against his skin. Alright, something like that. Get more black here. And outline that ear.
shade in some of this. Like I said, I never had the opportunity to draw one character twice. That's what you get when you don't read the directions. All right. Basically, we have the count pretty much done off here. Let's move on to his eyes. All right. The good count has some crazy eyes. All right. There. As you can see, some of the uh, water. Oh no, second tape. I forgot I double taped it. There. All right, no, it's pretty good. Thank goodness. Right, let's see if we got good luck with this one here. Let's see what we got. Double taped? Nope. There. All right. Actually, he looks more dynamic, demonic, with just the white eyes. But we're not going for that. Let's pick this up here. All right. His eyes are a bloodshot, half bloodshot, half hazel looking mess. There we go. That's better. That is a lot better. I think you guys can see this. I zoomed it in pretty good. Now I'm mixing pure paint. So as I am painting this, I can also feel it drying up on me. But I like to use the pure paint because I don't have to go over it a billion times. It's thicker. But if I have to mix some more or loosen it up a bit, I will. But at least I got this one eye done. Of course he has another. I'm dipping in a little bit of water. Just a little bit. I mean, like the smallest tip. I tore my brush around. I'm going to work on the other eye. Yeah, you guys can see that good. Good. I'm twirling the brush around. Carefully. Around the eye. He does have highlights. I'm going to need some more. Do, 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 do. All right. If I was doing a live video of this, I would give this away. Oh, yeah. And being that I'm such a kind-hearted natured soul, I may still do so. All right. Dip a little more water here. I want it to flow a little bit better. So I'm almost done with his eyes. Okay, go for that. Let's get to brightening that um, underneath here. Just a little bit underneath. Same thing here, not all the way, but just underneath a little bit. Like that, all right. He is a sick-looking puppy. I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be truthful. Let's do his bloodshot. The whites of his eyes are bloodshot. Okay, this guy's just not well at all. Of course, in the real life, as well as the movies, Count Dracula, though he felt he was fighting for Christ, he was just a quite simply, just, he's just a bastard. So, you know. Alright. What I'm going to do is just draw a little bloodshot. Little veins going here and there to and fro. No particular order. It was sick. And you're going to do it again on the other side. More bloodshot. This guy's gone. 
That's no nice way to put it. He's history. All right. Yeah, imagine staring at that on your big monitor, huh? Yeah. Okie dokie. All right. Now, his rather large pupils obviously are going to be black. Okay. And he does have a highlight. I did not clean my brush from the red. The highlight of his eye, of one of them anyway, is right here. But his eyes will be black. Like death. Soulless eyes. You can use whatever brush you feel comfortable with coloring the eyes in, painting them in. Alright. Whatever suits you. Okay. Like I say, me, once I have a brush in my hand, I tend to use it. I have a fairly steady hand, so, at least as of right now. I'm twirling the brush around because I got paint obviously on the other side. And, pretty much like that. Okay. If you think I'm done, I'm not. He also has a ring of black around. These funky brownish looking eyes here. Eyes, they say, are windows to the soul. Well, how about a creature that doesn't have one? Just something to think about. Still think I'm done? Now there's a way for you to do this. I should show you. But there. I'll go in from the black out. Takes a little practice. You also look at it like the steps of a clock. Or you can go from the pupil the other way, like so. Okay, not done yet. He's got secondary highlights and stuff like that. Got a thick lava paint. I'm going to go over this. Go back over this a little bit. Uh a little shine up in here you won't even tell I'll put a little glare of one here uh, maybe one going across his iris like that look like, look like it's kind of glazed over because it's a freak and one around here a little dot like that okay I'm going to shade let's get a little gray going I'm gonna tell you why because the inside of his eyes in the corner I'm not flat like that. Okay. Get a little water. Make it a glaze. And you're going to gray in some of that. Gray in some of that corner. All in here. Gray that some of that in there. Believe me, you can tell too. Once it dries and everything. Alright. I might want it even darker than that. So I'm going to just dip in a little bit darker. Now if it's too dark, just press your finger. If it's too dark for your comfort level, press the finger. Keep in a circular motion. Something like that. Okay. Now come on, tell me. 
Look at that. Alright. Alright, back we go. Now, does that look like Fritz Frilly now? Yeah, see, you guys thought I was cracking up, right? I wouldn't show you nothing going the wrong way. Okie dokie. I gotta get a little bit of white again. Because I want to do the highlights of his lip. All around here a little bit. Something like that. He's got... Now I would have used a thicker white for this. Set little highlights. Just around the bridge of his lips here. Okay. He's got a little bit of highlights here. You know, something like that going on. Um, he's even got more highlights like around here on his jaw. On his jawline up around here. It's just you building up extra white. Make some of the feather and disappear. Something like that. Alright. Enough of that. Need more need some gray. So let's make gray. Not a totally super dark gray. But you're gonna gray in his teeth and then you use the white for the highlights on the on the uh, edges. All right, all right. Oh, uh, let's gray them in. Gray in his teeth, and then we will add highlights. And yes, there will be black in these teeth also. Right when they they are uh, where they join. Okay. Don't have to really necessarily be cute. guy's already got fangs you, you're not making him cute in any way okay so you can you can end that noise he's just an ugly thing when he's in this form bottom teeth are shaded in a little more because they're uh, covered by his upper choppers and yet we will add highlights and all that to these two okay don't worry about that. I'm going to color him in. It's going to look even freakier with the gums. Alright. Okay. Let us move on. Let's put the gums in. Might as well. Nothing but pure red. One of the appeal of the vampire is these things, obviously. Right? Nothing but pure red paint. I'm going to have to water it up a little. Just a slight, the slightest bit. Such a small area. But believe me, if you get it wrong, people can tell. So just be painstaking if you must to get these things right, okay? His gums are absolutely grotesque on the bottom. Overlap into his teeth on the bottom. His teeth kind of push into each other. Kind of, kind of, kind of weird. Kind of messy. Much like that. All right. You're really not going to see too much. In here, but straight black. Okay. All right. Yes. No, I won't put no blood on his fangs and all that other Saturday morning cartoon garbage. You can save that for the Vampire Diaries. We're not going to do that today. All right. Let's add the pure white. A 
I'm going to do it in certain spots. I will use another version of white, a thicker white than what I have here to make it really stand out. Especially around his fangs. Even here. They will really show once it's all blackened in. Now, he does have, uh, we use a darker form of gray on this, in between his teeth there. Much darker than that. Alright. Just got to be careful. Make them connect. Even down here, like I say, some pushing. Kind of gross, actually. I think I got the majority of them. Let's, let's do these fangs right now, though. Something like that. Alright, could have made him larger, could have made him shorter, everybody knows who he is, um, they don't have to be really that deep, buried uh, out like that. Alrighty, let's use a thicker, use another brush to paint the inside of his denture. Alright, use him up with a little bit of blue-black mixture, I do have mixed up in here, in this bowl. And we're going to carefully... Remember, this is a very dark standouting color, so be very mindful of your edges. If you feel there is about getting in between his teeth, then don't do it. You can use a, uh, use a smaller brush. All right. But just be careful, that's all. I'm going to mess around with the bottom part first. I'm twirling the brush around. I don't think I'm in your way. No. Now I'm going to paint upside down here. It's just easier for whoops, me to do so. You need to give it a slight touch to see where I am with the brush. I've been doing this for a little while, so... If you're not comfortable in doing it the way I'm doing it, that's also fine. If you're one of those painters that can't tape your stuff down, then you have to twirl your paper around. Paper around. That's also fine. Do what you have to do to achieve the effect that you want. Alright? Yes? Okay. All right, his denture cream is finished. Let's pull it back. What do you guys think? Looks like Christopher Lee. Yes. All right. Well, I think it does. I do truly um, like to thank you for looking at this rather lengthy video. Uh, my bad, I should have did it right the first time, but I guess everything has a purpose. Um, th thank you for checking it out, watching it, and uh, I'd love to hear the comments. Check out my uh, YouTube channel. If you have any questions, leave the comments below, good, bad, or indifferent. It's okay. Love to hear your thoughts either way. Some of this is going to be sped up, obviously, for time constraints, because this is going on over two hours for this thing. Um, 
so it should be probably close to 90 minutes maybe if I when I cut it down um, if you would like to even attempt this okay um, give me a, a holler on the either on the YouTube channel or my uh, Facebook page uh, the name should have already been slung somewhere down here already <coughs> and uh hopefully I'll see you again and um can't wait to see your renditions on the uh the site uh where we're doing these uh monster paintings uh can't wait to see everybody's uh submissions and until then god bless and i'll see you next time bye bye